Nick, uh, two superb days of motor racing up at Silverstone last weekend for the World Series. Uh, and watching from afar, just sensational racing. Uh, the standard of the driving in World Series, I've got to say, is just amazingly high. Um, and, and again, looking from afar, you seem to have what is becoming a bit of a typical weekend for you. Uh, perhaps you can get some explanations going, but not brilliant qualifying, but in both occasions, just carving your way through the field and passing lots and lots of cars. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, the weekend's always good when you're driving at home anyway. Um, but we did, we have struggled in qualifying. You know, our, our best qualifying is a second, so we've shown we can do it. Um, but as of late, we've really been struggling uh, with getting the car to, you know, qualify at the front. So I've had to be pretty brave and do some very good um, overtaking moves, um, which have been, you know, fine because I like racing. So, yeah, again, I think it was 16th to 4th, and then obviously a few cars went off there. But then in, in the drive, we went from 15th and got, got to sixth and then had a bit of a, you know, come together with a few and finished eighth. So, yeah, the overtaking and the racing is good. It's just our qualifying performance that definitely needs to step up a level. Well, that first race was just, uh, well, it was, a, it was a memory of that ultra-wet British Grand Prix. I think it was 1975 when everybody went off long before your time. But tell us about that because I was watching up at um, the top end of the circuit and just couldn't believe car after car after car just ploughing into the tyre wall. What was that section of road like? Uh, well, that uh, a lot of people had stayed on slicks when it was actually really quite wet, so that's why you saw all the people going off. Um, you know, around Stowe, after the restart when everyone was on wet, Stowe, I mean, halfway down the hangar straight, you were having to let off the DRS uh, and just, just to get full down force and then just sort of aquaplane to, to Stowe and then aquaplane through Stowe and just sort it out on that side of the section and then you could push the other side, side of the track. So, especially because we were running the cars pretty low, expecting a dry race on the straights where you obviously you can't see much even if it's not you know not a lot of water because of the huge amount of downforce these cars have so um i think i was behind melka at one point you know pretty close and i just you know you just got to keep your foot in and hope that he hasn't you know gone off but yeah it was pretty you know you couldn't see anything and i was quite near the front so i bet you know the people outside the top 10 would have uh, really been struggling with the vision and then in race two, Nick, um, I'm not sure. we I didn't see it, actually, the incident. But I gather that, that, that something happened on that hangar straight with, uh, with Nico Muller. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if you saw me or not. But I, I was already halfway alongside on the exit of uh, Beckett's going onto the hangar straight. And he just took his normal racing line. Whether he saw me or not, I don't know. But that was, that was a bit scary. <laughs> um, but we came together again eventually in Luffield. But, you know, they classed that as a racing incident. Um, obviously, I don't think that, but <laughs> that's normal. And did you talk to Nico afterwards about that? No, no, I haven't talked to him yet, but we're, we're fine. We're good friends anyway, so we'll just laugh it off. And what, uh, in that race, you did a lot of overtaking, as indeed you did in the first. Where generally do you do most of the overtaking at Silverstone in a WSR car? Um, well, I actually did a few, quite, uh, quite a few into the new first corner because people weren't usually, you know, weren't that great um, down that straight for some reason or, or, or very brave. So into there, um, there was a bit of a wet patch coming onto the hangar straight. So if you got that right and just kept your foot in, then you could get a good run into Stowe, either outside or inside. Um, and then obviously into, into the old club. Um, and then if you're really brave, into Brooklyn's. But most of the stuff is into the slower speed or the first turn, I found. What was the car like? I don't know what data or numbers you may have got from F1 teams or from, from colleagues, but how quick were you? Can you try and quantify it through corners like Cops and, and Beckett's at Silverstone? Uh, well, you know, Cops was basically flat. So, it's you know, it's, you were shifting on through there, really. The new Turn 1 was completely flat. Um, even throughout the race, I was completely flat through there. Um, so, I think we're really... You know, the downforce levels, obviously, F1 has more, but the corner speeds now compared to last year are so much higher. You have completely different gears and completely different speeds. So, uh, And what was the entry to Beckett's, the Maggots, uh, Beckett's area like? Uh, yeah, well, that, that's flat on the, uh, obviously, the, the left and right, the first part, and then just down one gear for the left and down another if you needed to for the right. So, yeah, not much braking or anything like that through there. Nick, you've still got a reasonable number of points. Are you, uh, Comtech and yourself thinking in terms of the championship, how do you see the remaining races? Yeah, well, obviously I'm never going to give up on that until, until I can't, can't mathematically do it. So we've just got to really try and focus on the, on the performance of the car and qualifying and, and then just take it to them. Um, we've got, obviously, a new member here 
out of the engineering staff. So three heads are always better than two. So um, hopefully we'll be able to make some inroads into um, into the qualifying pace, and then uh, I, can, I know I can race. So just race at the front with uh, with the boys there. And that, t- from what I can see in the garage, looked to be Roly Ventini, who uh, I know well from the old Brabham days when he w- when he worked for the Brabham F1 team back in the eighties. Yeah, exactly. I think he's renowned to be one of the best engineers in the paddock. Um, uh, that's that's what everyone seems to be saying. So that's you know that's uh, pretty exciting. But um, I'm working with Paul Heath, my, my engineer. And we've won two races already this season, so it's just to see if he can uh, add any more uh, to the plate, really. Well, Nick, good stuff. What's uh, immediately on the agenda for you this week and then in the build-up to the next race? Uh, well, uh, Renault Sport have um, invited the top five from Nürbe- as of Nürburgring to, um, to Monza next weekend for the Formula 1. So we get to go out there, which would be pretty good, um, in, the, in the F1 paddock, meeting some key people. Uh, we get to watch you know, the free practice one in the Red Bull garage, which will be pretty special as well. Um, and then I come back for a few days and then we're training at Red Bull for a couple of days uh, the week after before heading to Hungary on the Wednesday. It's interesting how much Red Bull are getting involved in World Series, even with drivers beyond their own collection area, as it, as it were. Um, good to see. Yeah, it's great to see. I mean, Red Bull have always, well, since I think Boemi was the last person in GP2 for, for Red Bull and then they've been in World Series ever since. So Red Bull are a big um, you know, a big factor within World Series. So I think they're just trying to find the, the biggest talents just in case, you know, there's, there's a spare Formula One test drive at the end of the year and the young drivers think they've got their options open. Yes. Well, let's hope that goes your way. Thanks very much for talking to us, Nick, and best of luck in the upcoming events. And um, do well in the Red Bull fitness uh, area. I'm sure I will. Thank you. Thanks. Everyone.